And then let me start sharing this into Facebook. Just give me a second. There we go. Conversion. Good, good. If you're joining us, let us know what city and state you're from on the webinar portion, and I'm about to go live on Facebook, and then we'll we'll officially announce our awesome panel here. Let's see here. If that works. You never know if Zoom's going to work. Right? <laughs> Right. Crazy. Always when people talk, it's that's when it doesn't work, right? <laughs> All right, it took a while to go. There it is. Uh let's talk to this. All right, here we go. Leaders. I was trying to get my camera moved around so I could show the same uh, portrait that you have on the back there, Tristan, because I have it on my wall too, but I couldn't oh, figure you it out. Oh, uh, the One Life one? Oh, yeah, I actually have One Life. I have the dirt, the clouds, and positivity. Oh, somebody likes Gary V. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. That oh, should how, be about this? how about this? I got the shoes too. Oh, okay. that's, that's a little too much, damn it. <laughs> that's awesome, bro. I love that. Well, let, me, uh, let me wrap up the title and then let's get going on Facebook. I'm going to amazing team leaders. They are leading their teams and offices. All right. Good, good title. And here we are. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. And this one's kind of special. We don't usually do this. Today, we, we have the blessing of being able to interview these amazing team leaders. And we're going to talk about what they're doing for their offices and what they're doing for their agents specifically for massive growth in the months that are coming and how they're preparing for next year already. So. I'm going to go and cycle through who appears first on my name here. And Emily, you're first. So welcome. Please tell us a little bit about yourself in the area that you cover. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Um, I'm in Visalia, California. And so for those of you that don't know the Central Valley, I cover Tulare County and um, Kings County. So we have four offices spread out between both counties. Um, I've been a team leader for four years, um, and I am loving literally every minute of it. Uh, and so I recruit about, I don't know, between 125 to 150 a year, and we're number one in our market, and that to me means the world. So uh, I want to continue that momentum and, and push it forward. That, that's, those are insane numbers. I'm going to come no. back to you on yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not remember I last. <laughs> All right. Frank, you're next on my list, buddy. Besides being an awesome Gary Vaynerchuk fan, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I started in Keller Williams in 2004 as an agent, and um, I, uh, I've been with Keller Williams, and I think it's uh, probably one of the best companies out there. And um, I've been a team leader for the last four and a half years, and um, I've never recruited that many agents to one specific office. Thank you, Emily, for uh, doing that. I know Dan has. So, like, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the stepchild in this group. So, like, I'm always chasing Dan, just so Dan knows. Like, I'm always looking at the numbers for Dan's to see where Dan's at. Um, the, the, best, the best recruiting numbers I ever had was actually between two offices. Um, I was with uh, Bakersfield and I was with Porter Ranch last year. And uh, through, through both offices, I recruited about 147 um, yeah. agents. Um, but I think, you know, that's, uh, that's our job as team leaders to, uh, to, to grow the company. I love that, dude. I feel like you're the, uh, you're that stepchild that needs to catch up to everybody else here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just, uh, <laughs> thanks, Frank. I appreciate Not it. Not even close, right? Yeah. No, I know. Uh, Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Stubbe. I'm the team leader for uh, KW Encino Sherman Oaks. Um, I've been a team leader now for off and on uh, for about three and a half years. Um, I've only been with Keller Williams. I've been a licensed agent uh, for seven years this August. Um, so I do sell. I have a team. Um, I became the team leader of Studio City about three and a half years ago um, for a little bit. And then, um, but I'm here now at Encino Sherman Oaks. Um, love the valley. I'm actually buying a house here now and moving here. Wait, where? And, um, in Valley Glen. Oh, I love Valley Glen. And just opened escrow yesterday, my first house. And uh, do a pretty good job here in Encino wow. Sherman Oaks. We recruited 171 agents last year. Um, and usually around 15 to 20 a month. It's May, and we have 17 agents already joined the office this month. So, All right, Emily, we got it. We got it. <laughs> Sorry. Just had to flex my muscles here for a minute. I'm just going to interview the whole time. All right. No, all right. So, thank you for having me. It's super easy to be a team leader. So, uh, I don't know where to start, Paul. It's easy. I know, right? And I, I think it's funny too. Um, you know, Dan was also uh, assistant team leader at uh, at Keller Williams Hollywood Hills. So I I do think that that it's uh, that that bears mention, including uh, you know I work directly with Frank uh, also, uh, but not Emily. And so one of the interesting things I think if things are done right, um, that people can grow from one place in even in one ownership grow, group to be very successful in other places. Um, and I, I just think that bears uh, mentioning because when things are, are going right, you know, Keller Williams is a family and we see, uh, we see the, the uh, greatness in someone in our group if we don't have room for a team leader or uh, in, in Frank's case, sometimes it was geography and family that, that, that caused him to move. And just knowing he had done a great job with me uh, in one place, but he needed to move. And it was in an area where uh, there was a market center that somebody else owned. Th these are great opportunities. And, and I do think that uh, it shows a high level of teamwork. I love that, dude. Yeah, great, great point. Now, uh, it, I'm not going to take it lightly, guys. The numbers that you just gave me, that's insane. I know that there's a, probably the highest turnover in, in the team leader position. I've seen it. I've, I've been part of it. I've never been a team leader, but you know, I'm close to a lot of people that, that have been. So I'm going to go back and start with Emily and just ask, ask you similar questions here in a line. And Paul's going to ask you similar questions too. But Emily, uh, what, what are you focusing in right now with your offices and your agents to help them take advantage of this this all of a sudden growth that we're seeing in demand for, for properties, because it's not going to last forever, but what are you doing right now? Definitely. So one thing that's been amazing about if you take, I'd like to take a positive out of anything, right? So one thing that I've taken away from this entire COVID experience is our new ability to be able to connect with everyone um, from right, you know, from right at home. So their excuses of, I can't get to the office, I can't get to the trainings, they're kind of out the window now. So what we're really focused is on training. Like there's, you have no excuses, let's get you in here, let's get you motivated and keep going. But I think the most important part that we started um, before I get to technology, which I think is the biggest, best, biggest feature here, is the mindset. That's what we've really focused on lately is making sure that our agent's mind is, is ready and ready to go and uh, don't get me wrong. I think um, it's it's super important for everyone that to to come in and get focused and get moving, but they have to have the ability to realize that this is a career. This is something that even though it's great right now, it's consistency. You have to stay consistent. You have to what you're going to do now is going to impact you three months from now. So just getting their their mind right and staying positive and Emily, um, that's the big you, thing for me. How are you doing that? How are you saying, okay, you know what, guys, let's focus on mindset. What are what are the specifics as to how you're approaching that with your office? So our training calendar is 50% production, 50% mindset right now. Um, so not only do we have training that's, you know, the basics, right? The fundamentals, how to write a contract, how to negotiate all that. Um, we also step it up to, okay, how do you work your SOI? How do you do your 33 touch? All those production and money making activities. Um, but then the other 50% is, okay, what are we doing to get our mind right? What books are you reading? Um, let's start a book club. Let's um, do some activities outside of the office that 
we could all kind of get together, whether it's a prayer group or um, whether we're all doing yoga, whatever it may be, we're doing activities. It's just about the mind and getting the mindset. And, and reading is obviously, it's been the best um, asset for us right now is reading all these leadership books and podcasts. Those are great. I love that. I love that. Thanks, Emily. Good point. Now, Frank, uh, we're going to you, but Paul may have a question. Paul, just jump in at any time if you want to sure. interrupt. Sure. Uh, but Frank, Going with what Emily said, which was cool, the 50% production, 50% mindset, I think that's a cool approach. I, mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I hadn't heard that before. Uh, Frank, what's your approach with, with the offices that you have? Is it one office or are you still doing the two, the Porter Ranch? And I'm doing, I'm, I'm mainly, I'm 100% Porter Ranch. Um, and it, this, is a, this is a great office. The, uh, the one thing I think is really important with an office is that, you know, you can have a great team leader, you can have a great OP, but your entire office does not function as a whole unless your entire staff and your entire support staff is all on board. Um, as a team and working together as a team. If that's not the case, then you're just going to have problems across the board. And I'm super fortunate to have an amazing team here. Um, the one thing, what I'm focusing on right now, I think it's very interesting because when the market's amazing, it seems like everybody's amazing, right? But when the market hits a speed bump, it's like now it, it's kind of, what's that quote to where like when the, when the tide goes away, we find out who's naked, right? So it's like, you find out who businesses are on point and whose businesses are not on point. So what I'm trying to do with my office is focus everybody back down almost to the ridiculous in creating their foundation for their business and making sure that's strong, taking everybody that was doing amazing, that's not necessarily doing amazing right now, and working on that foundation because the market is going to be the market. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fluctuate. It's going to come up and down. And right now, like we got hit with a huge curveball. What I'm finding is that strong agents – you know what? They hit the speed bump, but they're 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 still going. So you know, I um and on one of Paul's um I think last week you guys were talking about you know you go back to your contacts. So like when I sit down with an agent to bring them onto the office, I say I say let's see what your potential is. How many contacts do you have in your in your phone? And the average you find it about three hundred. And then I ask them, I say, okay, well the average turnaround in somebody's database to where they have a commission experience is 0.623%. And so we do that math and that comes out to about $200,000 a year. So every agent, yeah. if they know about 300 people, which we all do, we just don't know how to put them in our database. I give them the strategy on how to do that. And then I've gone back to top agents who are getting leads from social media and all these other places. And I say, okay, that's fantastic, but you need to refocus on your actual foundation and your sphere of influence because just because you know someone in, in Arizona, that doesn't mean they can't use you. It's, it's less about the local agent now and it's more about the global agent. And we have so many powers with technology through command, through your CRM, to where if you know how to use these, you can get commissions from New York, from Florida, from all these places where you know people, you just have to create that mindset on how to do that. That's true, man. And, and that, that quote was by Warren Buffett. Right. It says, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. So I love uh, that. Nice, good figures, research. Hold on, figures you would know that quote, Frank. <laughs> I, I thought that was Frank, you know. Maybe it was Frank quoting Warren Buffett. Uh, I mean, Buffett, sorry, Warren quoting Frank, there you go. <laughs> Paul, do you remember when we interviewed the, oh, geez, the legends, the living legends? Uh, yes. Mauricio, Mauricio said the same thing Frank said. He uh -huh. said, hey, you know what? I tell all my agents to just pick up the phone because they've got yes. everybody on there. So that just, that resonated with me. And in, and in some way, one of the things I was thinking was, you know, there's so much that we have to do. There's so many different things going on in a, in a weird way. Uh, sort of being stuck at home, there, there, there aren't as many excuses to not pick up your phone and, and, and hit your database. And, and one of the things, and I, I think Tristan's questions so far are great. Um, I, I'm wondering, do, do you uh, on this panel, and anybody can, can answer it, do you have, what is your sort of set regimen? Do you have, is it the same regimen you had uh, pre-COVID or are you doing something different? Is there a shift in what you are doing day to day? So wake up. Do you let's go. Let's go to Dan on that one because okay. um, I think it's uh, perfect, perfect for that. That dude, answer that one. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I, well, last year, you know, Encino Sherman Oaks had an incredible year, um, you know, so we really went into 2020 with a lot of momentum. We did 1.3 billion in sales last year. 
So um, how we kind of addressed COVID at the beginning um, was we weren't gonna, um, you know, we weren't gonna stop. We were gonna push through and we were gonna take advantage of opportunity because there's opportunity everywhere. Um, we were really lucky that we had Bold already scheduled for March. So when Bold stopped um, and got changed to Bold Pivot, we already had 104 agents registered for Bold. Um, so we had over 100 agents in Bold Pivot when it started in May. Um, so just the, you know, the, the classes and the training and what we had ready to go, I think was in place. Uh, for me as doing my position as a team leader, um, I did take time, I think during, you know, April, um, and I did, really didn't reach out and make calls to people. It was more of the eye care touches and, and reaching out to the people that I'd already built and established relationships with. Um, but now as we're moving forward, even with our training calendar, our training calendar is starting to look just like it did prior to COVID. Yes, things are on Zoom, um, but you know, our team meeting is the second Tuesday of the month, just like it was before. Um, you know, Harma ROP does a coaching every month, the last Monday of the month, and we have, you know, coaching by Harma the last Monday of this month. Um, Veronica, who's our productivity coach, does coaching on Thursdays, so her coaching is every Thursday, just like we are. So we're pushing through, um, really trying to get back to, to normal, and obviously the market is up. Um, it's hot. You know, we had over 100 new listings last month, so, you know, we're just trying to keep our agents motivated, um, what they can be doing. Um, and really just pushing through. Oh, I like that because it goes with one of the questions that we have right now by Bruce. He's saying, okay, so in today's situation um, that we can't go into the office as much because some people are still not coming into the office, right? In, in most areas. Sure. How can we take advantage of our mentor? I'm going to go to you with that, Dan. Yeah, so I, every office, you know, has a different type of mentorship program. Um, so with us, um, I, I connect all of the new agents with a mentor from day one, so they have someone to go to. Um, our mentors are all involved. Um, we do specific coachings uh, with just everybody in the mentorship program, not just with the mentor, but with myself, with our ownership, um, with our leadership. So they really um, have the support, uh, just like Frank said, he has an incredible staff there in his office. Um, so do, so do, you know, we, fortunately we do too. And um, it's a real team effort. So I, I think, especially the new licensees, they know that they, that there's, there's opportunity, there's people in the office to help them. Um, we have a full schedule every day at 11 o'clock, there's something on Zoom, um, you know, and we had an, an, an agent join the office this week and he was a, a a, not a new agent, but new to Keller Williams. And he starts getting all these emails and he's like, is this your email? And it, it was like, I think a regional email. And then there's a KWRI email. <laughs> so he's really getting exposed to Keller Williams in general. It's, it's such an incredible company with training and support. So it's not just the local office. It's not just your mentor. It's our region. It's Keller Williams International. Um, there's plenty of things for people to do right now um, to get motivated to um, to educate themselves, um, you know, and just focus on. I always tell people, you know, especially people that were doing business before COVID had happened. It's like people are going to panic. People are going to do what they need to do personally, and you have to respect that. But there's plenty of people out there that um, are wanting to do business and transaction uh, transact business right now. And same thing. There's, you can't do open houses, but there's plenty of other things you can do, building your database, um, learning command, because command is really going to be an essential tool for all of us um, in Keller Williams. And um, don't, don't wait for you know, the smoke to clear and, hey, we're back to normal, because that's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, and if you're not focusing on, on where, there is, um, where there's opportunity, then, then you're going to be behind. I love that, dude. It goes along with uh, Frank's quote about when the tide goes away, you know, <laughs> just saying. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stay with you on this one, Dan, and then go reverse Frank and Emily, okay? Perfect. So we talked about what, what you guys are doing as offices and, and how you're helping agents individually. I like that. But what are some of the real challenges that you're facing right now? Over the last, more so in the last month and a half, what are some things that you say, oh, wow, this, this is a challenge and how have you dealt with it? Yeah, um, challenges. I think it's just really, 
you know, keeping people motivated, it has been difficult uh, during this time, um, especially if you're new to the business and you haven't done business before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have a lot of agents that joined just before March, you know, and so they're like, what do I do? Um, so it, it's really just keep on reinforcing the tools that we have, the systems, the models um, to get them to build up their business um, and stay focused. So I, I think that's, that's kind of the heart was kind of is the hardest thing right now because especially with open houses and things not opening up um you know it's been it's i think it's been a struggle for some people to see past um where they're going to find business and and transact um but that that's really it i think at the beginning you know march april when transactions were canceling that's all pretty much calmed down in my opinion um mm -hmm. You know, we're opening escrows constantly. There, nobody's. I haven't really been seeing anybody canceling because of COVID reasons, even though there's so many different forms and disclosures and, you know, the P changes every single day. But, um, you know, people are focused on doing business right now, just like how oh, they're tired of being in their homes. Um, they want to get to restaurants and be out. They're ready to get out there and do business and work. Yeah, you know, true. and I and I have a question. Really, uh, really, I truly don't know the answer to it. Could be for everybody, including Tristan, and that is that, you know, as I listen to this panel, um, if I if I uh, if I just came in from nowhere and listened to what you guys have said and your attitude uh, right now, um, I I I would think that you know, all realtors are just doing great. There's, there's all this phenomenal opportunity. And I, and I know that, uh, I know that there are so many realtors that are still waiting for this thing to be over, you know, like, oh, hey, let's watch some more CNN. Let's watch, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, right. That's, uh, you know, talk to some relatives about how terrible things are, um, you know, that, it, I think, is it just the attitude? Is it the mindset? Because I know some people are really doing a lot of business. So, so here we bring this great group on. It's why we do it, you know, so that there are, I hope there are some realtors um, in our region that are, that are watching this or going to watch it on YouTube. They're going to be like, wow, like what's the date on this? You know, is it really today? Um, do you guys get that feeling or is it, is it, is it just you? Is it the mindset you bring? What, what's the special sauce that we can give to these agents that think that, um, you know, the world's ending or, you know, let's stay and wait around till something happens? That's such a great question. I'll kind of start off. That's why I think why it was so important for us as a leadership team here in Tulare County was we have to focus on the mindset and we have to make sure that we are coaching and training that positive you know, movement forward. And that was kind of going back to the Tristan's question as well. It was going to be my same answer was, I have a real bad tendency of, to me, COVID happened in March and we're now almost in July. Like that was so last year to oh. me in my head, right? <laughs> and I have to remember, that's not how everybody thinks, right? So I have the challenge of, even though I want to move forward and we're going forward and nothing has changed, we're still dominating the market, we're still selling houses. Not everyone's in that same headspace. So that's why I think it's so important that when you're in your recruiting appointment or you're talking to an agent or even talking to your clients, you have to train them to think positive, train them to think we, we got to keep going forward. It's so important to really focus on the mind. My, my thoughts. That's dude. That's, that's so good because Paul, actually everybody here can relate to that. We move at such a different pace than most people that we have to take for a moment and be more, more, I, I think, socially aware um, self-aware and emotionally intelligent to understand, okay, got it. The person I'm talking to isn't there yet. And there's no problem with that. Right. Let me, let me slowly start helping them see the way I'm looking at the, but let me acknowledge that the way they feel is real. Right. right? So that's such, that is such a great point. And that is a massive challenge. Um, that's where you have these, these mega agents disconnect with those agents that are just starting and they're like, well, I don't understand what the hell's going on. I have a lot of business. I, they're just not doing it. Yeah. The mega agents have been doing it forever. Their, their business, this is like nothing. They're like, this is like a, okay, a new day, new challenge. Um, and the new agents are just like, oh my gosh, so overwhelmed. So what we did in our office was we broke down our ALC, we broke down our roster and each ALC member is responsible for like 10 to 15 people. And, and everyone was on board and they jumped right on in and said, okay, we want to help 
this younger group that's coming in and get them to see that it's going to be okay. We went through crazy stuff before. We're going to get through this again. So we're building the relationships to help them get past the uncertainty of what's going on. I love that, that they broke down the ALC differently, Paul. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. No, that's cool. Um, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's a great way to stay connected. I think in these times, it's important for, uh, for, for offices to make sure that they are connected with different, with, with the different agents. But, you know, for the most part, what I want to talk about is, you know, what can the, what can the agents do? So um, one of the things that I was, uh, that I was looking at was, uh, you know, the mega agents are getting a bunch of business and in some ways it's get, gotten easy for them. So even easier. So I've talked to big agents um, and sorry. And, uh, and I've talked to, uh, I've talked to big agents and, and that business is coming to them. Okay. Now you're, you're not a big agent. You're a brand new agent. It's like, Oh, you know, the sky is falling. Well, here's the deal. And just being very blunt about it. If you are a brand new agent in under any circumstances, okay, business will not come to you in that same way. But I believe that a brand new agent has just as much opportunity to jumpstart their business right now or more than they would in, in more regular times. Does that make sense? So I'm not, I'm not saying, Hey, I'm a brand new agent, you know, Oh, uh, you know, this is a terrible time to start. I think it's a great time to start, but be, but know that it's mm -hmm. that, that the launch of a career takes a lot of energy, no matter when you do it. Yeah. You, you know what, Paul, can I speak to something there that you said, you said that all these, these big agents have business coming to them. And I, and I would actually disagree with you because if you talk to those big agents, those big agents have had those people probably in their pipeline for a period of time and they've reached out to them numerous times and they have conversations with them numerous times. So when it just comes to them, it wow. seems like it's just coming to them. But if a quote unquote new agent jumps into the pool and starts doing the two, the two things that I think is, is super important as an agent and that's create their sphere of influence and fill their database as quickly and as fast as they possibly can and then over communicate with them ad nauseum to where you're thinking, wow, this is a little uncomfortable to communicate with my people that much. That's probably when you're just at the point of communicating with them at the right amount. Um, one of the things we're doing in my office is that normally you would put your people on a quarterly touch list where you touch your people once a quarter. That was like the norm. Now I'm telling my people, I go, that's, that's not enough. Because of the way everything's changed, you should communicate with your people on a monthly basis and increase it. Um, one of the things we're fighting um, with the agents that I see is complacency, is that you were told to stay home, you were told to not do things, you were to, and so everybody kind of literally stayed home and started not doing things. And in my mind, when it yeah. comes to business, it's like sports and business have the same philosophy when it, when, when it, what it takes to win, and that's speed. You have to be fast. Any team out there that is fast, that's the team that's probably going to win. And that's the same in business, is that you have to be fast and you have to communicate with your people a lot. Um, lack of technology, I see a lot of agents that have not adopted technology, have not jumped on the technology train, are, are having trouble right now. And I, from years ago, I told people, you know, I was, I was on Facebook really early and I told people, you know what, you can either go with technology or you can get drugged by it. Those are your choices. And right now there's a lot of people getting drugged by technology and it's our job as leaders to help push them into that space. Right. Um, and the one thing that I found as far as being a team leader is that you can't be more motivated than, you, the, you can't expect the person sitting across from you to be more motivated than you are. So you have to be passionate, you have to be motivated, you have to be positive above and beyond anything else because there's a lot of doom and gloom. I mean, if you watch the news, I mean, watch the news for five minutes and let, let me ask you how you feel after you watch the news. I try not to watch the news, but motivation and positivity, I think are major keys in this position because this is how we're going to, we're, we're the example of like, you know, Dan has his own team. I'm sure Dan um, resonates with this really well is that, you know what, you have to lead by example with your team and they're gonna look at you as far as what are you doing? How are you doing it? And it's really about spreading the positivity and staying motivated and showing people the way to go, not just telling them. That's very true. Um, Frank, I just want you to answer the question in regards to challenge for your office. What, what's the biggest challenge that you've seen over the last month and a half or so? It's, it was complacency. 
you know, agents just not feeling that they need to, or trying to figure out what the new norm is. And it's just like, oh, it's a good market. It's a bad market. It's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's no. Things are always going to change. And your ability to adapt faster is going to depend. That, that's going to be your success. If you can adapt quicker, you're going to be more successful faster. And so the game has never really changed. So the game is, is you fill your database as fast as you possibly can. And then you communicate with your people in your database as much as you possibly can. And yeah. it doesn't always have to be about real estate. And the challenge I think is a lot of people think, well, what am I going to talk to them about real estate? It's like, no, you call them and you talk about their, their, your family. You talk about their occupation. You talk about their recreation. You talk about their dreams. You talk about their kids. You talk about their dog. You create, people are so focused on the transaction and the listing and the sale that they're not focused on the one most important thing that they should be focused on. And that's the relationship. If you just focus on the relationship, the business will come 100%. I'll, I bet my career on it. That is such a really good point. Uh, that, that's a very, very good point. You sound like Seth Godin. <laughs> I, I need less hair. Yeah, he's the one that says, hey, look, it, it's a journey. We have, to, we have to connect with people on this journey which is show them that you're the one that's going to be able to take them to the level they want to get to. This is that's what it. For. Yeah. This is our, this is what we, our careers are on, off of this. This is what we're, we're put on this platform to do. So to me, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. I love that. All right. So then let's go to Frank next with the next question and then we'll go to Emily and then Dan or maybe Dan and then Emily, we'll just mix it around here. Here we go. Frank. So, now we talked about challenges. Now let's get into what you're doing in the next few months to prepare for what you think the next market's going to look like. And let me throw some curveballs in there because this is an election year, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, right? We just had uh, Bloomberg come up with an article yesterday indicating that there's a ton, a ton of delinquencies, right? But they're not taking into consideration the whole forbearance issue either. So what are you preparing your office for? What are you preparing your agents for, for what may happen next? What does that look like? So, and I like when Paul talks about superpowers because um, I think one of my superpowers is um, first and foremost is probably persistence because I think I've had every obstacle thrown in front of me throughout my entire life. And in my career, I have every excuse to be like a failure in life and it's like you can choose to be a failure. You can choose to be a success. It's, it's really just a mindset issue. And so this is just another obstacle that's getting thrown in front of us. And there's just all these different things. And you can look, say, oh, my God, you know, I hate Trump or I hate Biden or coronavirus. And you can make up all these excuses on where on the reason why your business is where it's at. Or you can just decide and start doing the, the fundamental things that you need to be doing consistently to get your business where you need to go. So first of all, I want to get everybody in my office back to the model and to focusing on the foundation. And, and I sat there and I talked to an agent in my office the other day whose business kind of fell off track or whatever, and he wasn't really doing any business. And I said, you know, what's the most important thing right now? And he was like, oh, I need to do this with my database and all these speed. And he, he, he rattled on about all of these different things that he needed to do. And I said, no, 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 no. One thing you need to do is you need to focus on one. Get one. So a new agent coming in, it's like, do everything you can possibly do to get one transaction. And then you take what you did to do that and you start building it slowly. And you, and you basically, you, you take a model and you look at the model and you focus on what the model is. Now, this is a model for seven figures. It's like, you're not coming out of the gate doing seven figures, but the core basics of what your business is comes down to your sphere of influence. Like 90% of the agents that are out there are focusing on their sphere of influence and that's where their business is coming from. And I, and I do this in my team meetings and I know Dan and Emily probably do it in their team meetings is that the agent goes, I have a new listing coming up. I go, where'd you get it from? Oh, it's a sphere of influence. It's a sphere of influence. Like everybody's sphere of influence. But yet everybody's so like enamored with like online marketing and flyers and oh my God, I can't do open houses. It's like if you were, fo if your business was focused on open houses, then your business was broken from the beginning, period. Like your business should be focused on sphere of influence because, and then when you get into a farm, you create a connection with that person and that person in your farm becomes part of your sphere of influence and it's just a spiral. 
So I'm trying to get back. So one of the classes I'm starting to teach in my, my office is called Speed to Lead. And it's basically a lot of things that I've reiterated and that we've heard from other people. It's not original content by me by any means, but I'm just taking all these great pieces of information and focusing the agents back on getting back to talking to the per like I'll go through someone's phone, I'll flip through their contacts and I'll go, who, who is that? And they'll go, oh, that's John. I go, when's the last time you talked to John? He's like three years ago. I go, call him. And I'll go, what? I go, no, call him right now. And this is what you say. And I'll give him the script. And I've actually done this. So like lead by, um, lead by example is that I've gone back to deals that I did in 2004 in real estate. And I went back to actually classmates.com and looked up people that I went to high school with and started messaging them. And I said, hey, this is Frank. I was just, you know, at home, coronavirus, went through my high school yearbook and I ran into you and I just wanted to check to see how you're doing. Four out of five people I contacted, I said, you know what, this is great. I would love to keep in contact with you. And I just spilled all my contact information. Four out of five people gave me their contact, contact information back from people that I haven't seen in, I'm not gonna say how many years. Um, but then the <laughs> fifth one, the fifth one, because I grew up in Las Vegas, I wasn't even out here. You know, he messaged, hey, when you get into town, let's get together. So five out of five people that I contacted were like, yeah, let's, let's keep in contact. And I just increased my sphere of influence from going to classmates.com, which is free. So it's like getting back to the foundation of growing your sphere of influence is the number one thing. And, and honestly, right now, that's, I don't know what else besides social media, which I think is my sub superpower, um, social media and sphere of influence. And they kind of go hand in hand. You're not going on TikTok, Frank? Well, hold on. You're going to like this because you did, a, you did a, um, a live video on TikTok on how to do TikToks and what to do with TikToks, right? Yeah. So what happened was, is that I said, you know what? Tristan's the man. That's a thing. And I jumped on TikTok and I started playing around with TikTok. And I said, you know, it'd be really funny if I did the drum solo to Phil Collins in the air tonight by slamming the cabinet and you 9.2 million views later on TikTok because of you. Um, That's now, like, insane. I, I, had, I had kids from high school, like, oh my God. And let me tell you, if you think getting 9.2 million views on TikTok is gonna make you cooler as a dad, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, one of the things, uh, and it's a question for everyone that will lead you to the answer that you need um, is what about this benefits me? Okay. So, and, and that, you know, it's, it, it's honestly to be, to be very honest, it's a difficult question because that question works no matter how bad the situation is. So you are faced with a very, very difficult, very sad happenstance. As a matter of fact, COVID is like that, right? Um, but no matter what happens to people or what your situation is from something very, you know, from moderately bad to very bad, if you say, what about this benefits me? Because there is always, you don't have to have an answer to the question, you just ask the question. If you ask it and ask it and ask it, you will get answers to it because we cannot see into, we can't see very far into the future and consequences of the things that happen change very dramatically. So what seemed like a complete, disaster, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a business world, right? Uh, you know, what's, what's the worst thing that happened to somebody? Now we're independent contractor realtors, but what's the worst thing that could happen to somebody in, in business? Generally like, oh, I got fired. Now we all know if that happened to you, it would be devastating, right? And some people don't recover from that. Um, but when you're outside of that, it's obvious for us, it's like, oh, well, geez, if you're fired, you know, it gives you a great opportunity to look for a new career. It gives you a great opportunity. If you love your career to look at a new company, it, you know, it just goes sort of on and on. It gives you a great opportunity to look, to introspect a little and say, why was I fired? So th there, there is something positive in, in everything if you choose to look for it. And that's a great tool to look for it, to look for. Also, uh, Frank mentioned the thing about superpowers and that's something that I'm always asking everyone. Okay. Because you know, Frank's superpowers. Oh, he's gonna, is he gonna put the cape on? I love, I love it. <laughs> uh, Frank takes this stuff seriously. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and and I, I ask agents that all the time. What is your superpower? Because 
you know, if you're watching this and you're, and you know, and you're, you're listening to somebody who's so social media savvy and they just blow it out of the water and you just, yeah, that's just not you. You know, you look at it, you go, my career's over. Okay. Because that person is so phenomenal. I, you know, I have a team leader that I work with regularly. It's just everything he does on social media is cool. And I feel like mm, 50% of what I do on social media is cool. If I'm lucky, you know, but if you listen to that guy, you're like, well, if I can't do, if I can't do TikToks, if I can't do, um, you know, all these different cool things that, that I, I can't make it. Well, the, the, here's another quote for you. The upside of your upside is always going to be greater than the upside of your downside. And what that means is focus on what you're really great at and knock that out of the park and forget the things that you're not great at. Um, and in fact, you know, Frank, I, I, I actually, I do have a, I do have a very good friend, uh, very close friend of mine who is an incredible, he, he got almost all of his business. He does a lot of business. He's just a buyer's agent and he makes, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, believe it or not. And he was getting all of his business from open houses. So now what? And, and I think there is a flaw in the future of that business maybe, but you can't argue with success. And he just pivoted. You know, he just pivoted and he started doing things like what you're talking about and going to his sphere and he's doing just as great, if not better right now uh, than he was before. So there's always something to do. And it might be an interesting question to, uh, to, ask, uh, to ask Emily and Dan uh, briefly, what is your superpower and how do you, how do you uh, differentiate uh, yourself using your superpower? How do you get more of your upside? I, for me, I can connect with anyone. Um, my relationship building, I mean, it's a technique I've, I, oh gosh, since I was little, I've never been the shy kid. I've always been the one that's outgoing, first one to speak. Um, I, I just can connect at a level and I relate to people really easily. But one thing about me and that I've taken from all this is, uh, like I'm probably the last person on, I don't have a TikTok, I don't have a Snapchat. Uh, I think I have a Twitter, but all I follow is like, I'm huge into sports, so I just follow my sports teams and I barely use Facebook. And I'm out here, number one in my market, um, recruiting 150 a year, because um, I focus, like you said, on what I do really, really well. But if you told me, like if Dan says he gets 150 off of Twitter, I'm signing up for Twitter right after this call time. <laughs> so, so we'll have me, lunch, Emily. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just super competitive, and I think that drive to be consistently just above every, like, like just hearing Dan and Frank talk about their numbers and what they're doing, like I'm already itching in my head to go out and just do it. And so I think that's my superpower is I want to get out. I want to do it. I want to be number one. So what does it take? It just takes doing it. That's, and I'm going to connect with you while I do it. So. <laughs> How about you, Dan? What you know, I think I'm really similar to Emily. Um, I'm, it's really easy for me to, to make friends, to get along with people, to connect with people. Um, even when I started in real estate, I, I, for some reason, I just knew that my sphere was going to be where my bread and butter was. I, you know, I agree with Frank, like, you know, open houses were just not an option for me. <laughs> um, so, you know, I definitely think connecting with people, staying in touch with people is, is a superpower for me. Um, I actually really promote the fact that I do, do do sales and, and, and I do have a team. Um, my agents know I'm in the office every single day. I'm there for them all the time, um, but I consider myself a resource to them. Um, so even during you know COVID, and I have a team, it's like I had to shift my business as well. And it's it's really the the what you need to focus on is building relationships and um, building your system. And that's something that everybody can do, regardless of what type of business they do. And um, this is the perfect time to do that. So that's where our focus has been. That's where my team's focus has been. Um, there's tons of opportunity. So I, I really think, you know, personality, connecting with people, um, being in the business is really a superpower for me. Who, whoever's focusing on their systems right now, um, you look at the top agents, even in our office, um, you know, Stephanie Vitaco, the number one Keller Williams agent worldwide in our office, uh, regardless of what the market is, we've been talking about, you know, um, a, a recession or a downturn or a shift, I think for longer than I've been a team leader. Um, so it's like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, you know, and then it's like 2020. It's like, well, we just did this. And it's like, how is this coming? And look what 2020 happened. So it's a crystal ball of what's happening in the future. But people that are focused on their systems and continuing building their relationships, they're always going to do business regardless of what the market 
dictates. I love it. Frank, what about you, Super Frank? <laughs> what was the question again? What's your superpower? <laughs> oh, my uh, persistence, um, social media, um, you know, connecting with people, I think is, I think that's a, that's a, that's a superpower that a team leader just needs to have in general. It's just, I, I'm really good at telling my story and I'm really good at helping agents find their story because when an agent comes on, they're lost. They don't know what to do. It's like, what's your story and how do you play it, play it out? So, um, when you put a goal in front of me, um, it's not, it's not if I'm going to achieve that goal, it's when. And so I think I've hit, been hit with so much adversity in my life that it's just like, I, I just know the only thing that can stop me is me. And, you know, as long as I have that mindset, like if you tell me, if you come to me and you're like, Frank, this is the goal I want to hit, then like, guess what? You just brought me on your team. And now in my opinion, you have my mindset and we're not stopping until we hit that goal. And I tell agents all the time, I'm going to give you every tool, including myself that to hit your goals, the only thing I can't do is the work for you. You have to do the work. So I think persistence is probably my, my number one superpower just because I, I'm not willing to be stopped. I love it, man. That's a good one. And um, in working, in working with, uh, sorry, go ahead. Cause I'm going to mute that while that thing's right, No problem. Um, Dan, then let me go to you in regards to future. What are you looking at? now to do, how are you preparing your offices, your teams for the end of this year and possibly early next year? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I tried to merge that answer into the last <laughs> answer. So continuing to build those relationships, those I care, um, you know, calls and texts and, and really strengthening those foundations, um, working on your systems. Um, you know, for, for me, you know, I talked about Sphere being where I get business from um, when I started in this in this industry, I, that was my my focus. I created a database, um, and I had over two thousand contacts in them. But during COVID, you know, and I've I've been somewhat marketing to them, but being a team leader takes a lot of time away that. And I always say that I put my business in my back pocket um, because I care so much about the office and the growth of the office and our agents. Um, so this time, I've really been able to focus, and I actually hired an assistant during this time. Um, I've been focusing on my database, cleaning it up every con so that every contact in command. So as I've been integrating my business into command, because I was using a different uh, CRM, every contact before I put it in command has a first name, last name, birth date, mailing address, phone number, email. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in a way that my command is going to be fully operational, um, chunk by chunk. So I'm not just dumping in 2,000 contacts that are missing holes everywhere. I'm finding them on Facebook, attaching the Facebook profile to the command. Um, so that way when my business is full, fully utilizing command, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna go, you know, and it's, it's gonna be the is that, is that what you're referring to as one of the systems that you're working on right now? Because- Correct. Uh, okay, cool. All right, now, are you doing it personally or are you having part of your team do it or virtual assistants? What are you doing? I, I hired an assistant during this time just for my team, she, well, for, for my business, but she's also helping me recruit. So it, it's kind of a, a dual role. <laughs> she's in-house or virtual she's assistant? in-house. No, okay. she's in-house. She's in front of my office. She's here. Um, so she's known to get to know the agents as well to help me set um, appointments uh, to meet with my agents and doing coaching appointments with our agents. So um, she's really a full-time assistant for me, but she also connects with the agents on my team. So every member of my team not a big team. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to impress the world here. Um, it, but it's a team that works for me and fits for me. And it's taken seven years in this business to kind of finally feel proud of, of what I'm creating. Um, but every member of my team is working command and working their database and entering contacts into their database and building our team database um, to get business for all of us. So Dude. that's kind of the things that I'm I, I share with my agents and try to get my agents motivated to doing too, because if, if I'm doing it, they can do it. Um, and we all learn from each other, regardless of what level of experience you are. Mm -hmm. I love that because you're preparing for, for what command is coming up with next, which is the team command aspect to it. So that uh, that's good preparation for the for the future there. Paul, you were gonna say something, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm learning so much great stuff. I, I muted myself. Uh, but I had so much good stuff. It, it, it's amazing how much I learn from from uh, listening to to great team leaders that are that are out in the field every day. Um, you know, one of the things just just for a brief second back to the superpower thing, and that's just that 
don't be discouraged. Um, everybody has a team, everybody has a superpower. So for example, I think a great superpower when you're a team leader, and this is really for agents. Okay. So you have to just look at it as an, as an analogy, but, uh, but for a team, for a team leader, if I could pick a great superpower, like, Hey, I'm going to be a team leader. Like if I had grown my own personal business from 20 units a year to 50 units a year, and I had gone through that process and used Keller Williams systems and models to do that. And I, and there's a team leader that I work with that did that. I'm like, wow, that's a superpower. Okay. Now, um, I have another team leader who is just as successful or more successful that has never done real estate sales. Okay. So if you're, I'm just, I'm just drawing that dichotomy. Okay. Because you don't have to have a particular superpower to absolutely crush it. Just know what yours is. And sometimes, because I know these team leaders, sometimes, for example, one superpower that Frank didn't mention, just because it's sort of a subsidiary superpower is Frank's a single dad. And you know what? Frank has had, like he said, yeah, oh, I've had personal struggles, okay? He's, he's, he's in the grind of raising kids as a single dad and, you know, working every day. So how's that a superpower, right? Well, right. the answer, you know, Frank told me, you know, anytime I talk to a realtor that I want to get into business with or whatever, if they, I just look through the list. I, I find all the single moms and the few single dads. And I'm like, bam, I'm going to connect with them because I can tell them how, what I've done in balance in my life. So that's a good example of number one, you don't have to have a particular superpower to be a phenomenal realtor. Um, and it sometimes it can be what seems like a disadvantage uh, can be your superpower. Um, so that's that's just a that's just a point of reference. And then sort of back to it, um, it was one of the things that I think was was going between Dan and Tristan, and that is, uh, it's a little it's related to that. But I think every realtor should be able to answer this question, and that is, what do you want to be known for? Okay, and so. Uh, if you don't have that answer, like right off the tip of your tongue, that's okay. That's why you're, that's why you're doing it right now. Uh, what do you want to be known for? And it might be, well, I want to be known for, you know, the, the Val, I'm the Valley Glen specialist that brings, you know, people together with great homes or, you know, I have, I, I have, you know, this many, you know, I'm, I'm way more than just a slam a real to slam a, a, a person into a house. I connect with them. I connect with the house, whatever, what, what do you want to be known for? Okay. And so, and I challenge you, if you're watching this uh, webinar, write in the chat box, well, what do you want to be known for? And it should be just a few sentences. And if you're not sure, write it down in terms of uh, this is, this is, uh, this is something I want to work on. And AJ will put, uh, will put my email in the chat box, or it could be any, anybody's. Uh, I, I certainly volunteer send me the what you want to be known for it's another thing is it's the it's it's a version of the elevator pitch okay you should have that 11 second you know as a as a realtor that 11 second you know thing about me right and and i and i'm going to i'm going to give you a little hint on it I mean, this is just how i do it and and we've got five we've got you know five sorry i i count myself out of it we've got four other experts on this webinar to 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 say that there's a different way to do it. But the way I do my elevator pitch is I talk about the company, the national company for three or four seconds. Then I talk about the local company for three or four seconds. And then I talk about myself, okay, for about 10 or 15 seconds. So it'd be like, hey, I'm Paul Morris. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. You know, we are the number one real estate company in the world. And we have the absolute best technology to help our agents or to help our clients, right? And, and then I'm with Keller Williams and CNO Sherman Oaks and do a few words about why that is so great. We, we, here's what we do here that's fabulous. And then, and that's my, that's my six seconds that's not directly about me. And then I go into, and I specialize in this neighborhood and da 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 da, -da and, and, and take care of my clients. That's your elevator pitch. So you could do what you want to be known for or what's your elevator pitch. So, so uh, panelists, what do you think about that idea? Do I have it? Do I need some tweaks on it? That's perfect. I'm sold. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Um, but that, that is, uh, that's, and, and you know, and I just have to go back to someone there's, there, there have been a couple of questions in the chat box and one of them was, Hey, I'm a, I'm a brand new realtor. Where do I start? I think that each one of us, uh, have given some, 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 uh, hints on that. And we talked about, I care messages. I, I was talking on every webinar to all of our realtors when things got weird really quickly okay and i said oh all right my phone you know has very few incoming messages and the incoming messages are coming from uh very close family and very close business associates right um and and that's what it should be uh because people are freaked out but if you want to use this time and you are are willing to roll up your sleeves and use this time to do more lead generation than you've ever done before, you can actually leapfrog in your particular market and you can go, let's say you're number six in your market. You could go, if, if you're number six in your market, you come to me, I'd say, well, where's number five? How are we gonna get to number five? Then we'll get to number four. Right now, I would say, let's get super active, um, do the outgoing messages. I'm no longer recommending an I, strictly an eye care message. I'm now recommending a message that's a check-in and then you can also ask them the the more the more basic whatever your whatever your opening lead generation line is you know what are you, what are your real estate plans or you know how has COVID affected your real estate plans um are you planning to move or or do you know anybody planning to move and 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 so i check in first and then i go right into the real estate sales uh question and right now you can leapfrog ahead of the so many realtors, the number one realtor in your area is gonna be doing a bunch of business, okay? Because, not just because they're number one, because they did all the work that it took to get to number one. Now, if you're number six, you don't have to worry about number five, and then four, and then three. I say go straight from six to three by getting super active. Um, and I will say that get in touch with your team leader because the thing, that, the thing that people need the most, and I'm talking mainly for myself, okay, but if there's anybody else out there that's like me, I don't do super well without an accountability structure, okay? So if I go, well, you know, I listen to the webinar and I really need to reach out more, okay? That doesn't help me. It might help other people. So I go, hmm, okay. So what is reach out more? How about this? I'm going to set a number of contacts that I'm going to do every single day and I'm going to hold myself accountable to it. And, and if Emily is my team leader, I'm going to say, I'm going to say how yeah. many, how many, uh, if Emily is my team leader, I'm going to say, Hey, Emily, how many contacts do you think I should be doing to really improve my business per day? And that, that's a live question, Emily. Hundred. How many should I do? How 100, many? hundred contacts a week. 100 contacts a week. Okay. So is that a live contact, actual conversation? Actual conversation. Okay. That's a, yeah. that's a, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's a high bar. Okay. And I might even say, Emily, I want to win. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with, uh, with 10 a day. Okay. Is that all right? You can do more, Paul. Iffy. Okay. Okay. All right, fair enough. And I like Emily's, I like the way Emily's doing this. But Emily, if I, if I send you an email at the end of the day, uh, would you be open to receiving that email? Of course. And okay. if you don't send it to me by five, I'll send you one at 501. <laughs> okay, I love it. And then, and then and now, I've just, now I've just created an accountability structure. There's not a team leader around that wouldn't love to have that, that call, okay? Uh, you know, to, to call a team leader and say, uh, hey, Dan, I, I've got a bunch of work to do. I'd like you to do it for me. Okay. You know, uh, and Frank, you know, th th that's not what a team leader wants to hear. But if I call Dan and I say, hey, Dan, I watched the webinar, you know, I want you to help me with scripts. Okay. Let's make sure my script is good. And we'll, could we spend 15 minutes on my scripts? And then after we spend that 15 minutes, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to do a certain number of those calls every day. And by five o'clock, I'm going to, I'm going to email or text message that I've done. I promised 20, but I only did 16, but I'm going to send you 16. I did 16, Dan. Is that, is that, a, is that something you're willing to get from your agents? Of course. <laughs> Delighted, right? Right. For sure. 
Yeah. So just, just get active and get active and get an accountability structure. And, and, you know, I think I, I've, I've enjoyed this so much. Um, I'll, I'll address one more quick thing that I saw in the chat box and, and someone said, you know, geez, I wish that and it's a little bit of an elephant in the room sometimes, you know, I, Oh, I, I wish that team leaders, you know, would, would from other offices would work more together. Okay. And I think we have done a, uh, you know, we have done a better job of that than we've ever done. Can we use improvement on it? Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you that, that in, in owning more than one office, okay, I even have to deal with my own team leaders working well and sharing with their, with their team leaders from the, from, from a same, from the same ownership group. But, but that, those are days, those days are in the past. And that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. And that's why we're talking to team leaders from all different offices. Certainly we're going to pick the best ones. And I really don't think that we're in a time now where uh, I, I see, okay. And I, and I think it's just the way you look at things. I see team leaders cooperating more from different offices than I ever have before. And there are different team leaders have different resources and superpowers and and I don't know a single team leader that's that's a great productive team leader that wouldn't get on a webinar and share all of the things that they want to share with everybody around. Emily, you know, Emily actually might be in a geography that's less scrunched together, you know, but but Frank and Dan, you know, they're 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 in market centers that have all sorts of different market centers around around them. They're not afraid to get on and say, hey, let me tell you my secrets, right? Uh, because we all want to help each other. There's plenty to go around, right? And and uh, Tristan, do you want to give a couple of closing thoughts, and then maybe cl some closing thoughts from our our panelists? Because I could talk to these guys for two hours, you know. Yeah, not man, I, I I think it's good. That just shows yeah. how powerful they are. So let's end it with kryptonite. I want to know a weakness. Like if you ask me what my kryptonite is, I'd be like, it's uh, chocolate chip cookies. It's probably. <laughs> <laughs> every day every day all right so uh dan what's your weakness buddy um my weakness I, I you know i'm i'm a high d but i'm a high i and that high i needs a lot of love and attention from everyone <laughs> so when when i'm not getting it you know then I, I i get into my own little box and i it's so pulling myself out of that box is sometimes difficult. And when you have to, um, you know, present, you know, we're, we're motivating everybody, keeping them positive, um, keeping them in, in production and busy. And, and, you know, it's, every day is different. So it's, it's staying, staying level. <laughs> that's my, hey, you know what? that's, that's what I love. That's what I love about Dan, because Tristan, you asked a phenomenal question. But then you softballed it. You're like chocolate chip cookies, man. I mean, you know, then we go to, but then we go to Dan. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to pick pick no, on you, Paul. But no, no. I, I mean Tristan. Then we go to Dan, and Dan gave like a genuine, heartfelt, like real kryptonite answer. And yep. and 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 I think what Dan was saying, because I've worked with Dan, and I think Dan was saying was like, hey, I'm a hard worker. Uh, I, I will, I'll get out there and I'll crush it. Okay. But I know that I need, you know, love and support in order to fill my bucket uh, before I can go out and, and crush it. And that's such right. great awareness to have because at the end of the day, and you know, as a slightly older man, uh, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes what I find is uh, when you can have that awareness it's great to surround yourself with people that fill that bucket. And sometimes you're just not going to get exactly what you want. And how do you do that for yourself? You know, and, and how do you, and, and, and in times of COVID, it's such a great, such a great uh, piece, Dan. And we could, we could do, you know, 20 minutes on that for sure. <laughs> Thank it. you, Paul, for sure. So, so Frank, what is your, uh, what's your, and great question, Tristan, what's your kryptonite? I would say negativity, um, lack of energy. I just, I need, I need positivity and I just, I can't, I mean, as, as agents and as team leaders and leaders in general, I mean, it's so easy to get our, get in our own head. And I, I went through such a bad period of time, like in my life at one point to where I realized that I had to constantly be filling myself with positivity and positive energy. And when I get around that stuff, that's just like the worst. I hate negativity. So 
I just that's that's probably my biggest uh, my biggest kryptonite. I hate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, All right, that, I'm hard to follow uh, up. Well, well, and I, if I could just say too, because it's so it's so it was so key the, the two comments, um, you know, that is those two those two kryptonites are are, are something that a lot of agents are going to feel, um, especially right now. It's hard to get. You know, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're talking about Dan's kryptonite, which is, and I identify with both of those. I really do. It doesn't, you don't, it doesn't have to be for everybody, but those particular two I identify with, and it can be more of a personal practice during uh, COVID to, to uh, seek out the positive people, right? To address Frank's uh, statement that are going to sort of fill my bucket to address Dan's because it's really two sides of the same coin. So really cool stuff, you guys, and really valuable to the people watching in our panel, uh, you know, watching, viewing in here. Start every day. And you know what? I, I'm going to tell you, I do not do this, okay? Um, but I have a, I have a, I'm friends with Hal, Hal Elrod, who does Miracle Morning, and, 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 and I don't do it. I'm, I'm interested in starting something, just having a morning routine that sets you off in the right positive direction. Well, I think would be a big help for me, for sure. All right, Emily. My biggest kryptonite is I'm not patient at all. I have uh, no patience and, and I work on it every day. I wake up and I said, I'm gonna be patient today. Um, but I have this mentality where I just wanna get in the Lambo and I wanna go a hundred on the freeway and I just expect everyone to go a hundred miles an hour with me. and. I just have to remember that not everyone drives Lambos. Like we gotta slow it down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you really can lead by example that way. Um, you know, you can lead by example. I know a lot of people that win through passion and energy. And I also get what you're saying too, because, because sort of in, in sales, right? Mirroring and matching, you know? Um, and, and in leadership, it's a little difficult because we have to succeed through other people. And to mirror and match their energy uh, it is a, is a challenge for sure. sure. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. I am, uh, <clears throat> I am on the road, uh, right now dealing with some family issues myself and, and, you know, and I, I tuned in, uh, I tuned in feeling a little negative. I tuned in, you know, with, you know, wanting a little bucket filling myself and I tune in a couple minutes late and I see like, Tristan's energy, you know, just overflowing and asking this great panel, great questions. And I find myself one hour later, I'm like, dude, I'm all good. I'm ready to go. I think we could go for four hours, Paul. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Well, thanks. Thanks for being on everybody. Appreciate your time. You guys are all absolutely amazing. I'm going to have to reach out to to all of you separately. So I need, I need their, Paul, can you connect me with all of them? Sure. Uh, AJ's the best at that, but, but it's oh, easy. Perfect. AJ's on here. AJ, can, it, can you connect me with Dan, Frank, and Emily, please? Appreciate yeah. it. Buddy. All right, guys. Well, thank you for being on, Dan, Frank. Thank you, Emily. Everyone. Thank you for having me. This, this was awesome. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thanks a lot.